Hi everyone, this is Z again. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing something that I wanted to do for quite a while now. I'm putting together a NAS server capable of some lightweight flex transcoding, but just to give you a heads up, it won't be one of those videos where I show you how to install a CPU and memory modules and put it all together in a standard computer case. What I do show you, however, is how I managed to fit some modern technology in a rather unusual box straight from the 1980s. Let's start from going over the parts list. The core of the system will be an ASRock Q1900 DC motherboard, which comes in a mini ITX form factor and sports an Intel Celeron J1900 processor. It's a 4-core CPU, clocked at 2.0 GHz, capable of turbo boosting to 2.4. Actually, Kuna puts this very CPU in some other NAS units. The DC implies the motherboard is powered by an external power supply, which not only promises lower power consumption, but also eliminates a quite bulky heat and noise source. Unfortunately, the power supply doesn't come with the board, but getting a hold of a compatible unit isn't a problem and doesn't cost that much. I myself managed to get a brand new 80 watts power brick, able to power all what this motherboard has in store for as little as $8 shipped. Two memory modules, 2GB each, come from a MacBook Pro, but pretty much any SOD DDR3 memory would do. For the time being, I'll be connecting a single 2TB WD red hard drive, but I'll make sure there's a place for another one in the future. And to make things a bit more interesting, I'll be also retrofitting a good old Raspberry Pi B+, which would serve as a Plex client. The server part will run Xpenology. And all that hardware will find its home in a Philips VCR from 1985, which cost whole $9 shipped. First thing on the agenda, get out the VCR. It takes a while, so to just fast forward through it. On a side note, this VCR would score at least 12 out of 10 on the iFixit scale. Next, I had to get rid of all excessive plastic to make room for my components. Clearing all partitioning walls revealed a spacious interior that will easily accommodate a mini ITX motherboard and a Pi. As I didn't think screwing PCBs to the plastic base was a good idea, I proceeded with making frames for the motherboard and the Pi. I took a U-shaped aluminum profile, measured out the lens between screw holes, cut out triangular pieces where I wanted to bend it, cleaned it up a little with a file and slowly and carefully bend the profile 90 degrees while pressing against a flat surface to make sure the frame turns out straight. I then put some threaded inserts where PCB screws hole are and has fitted both boards with plastic spacers in place so I know where to make cutouts for all the inputs and outputs on the ASRock motherboard and the little pie. Next, I glued the frames to the base and proceeded to making the wiring. Standby and reset buttons on the front were just begging to be repurposed. And so I cut a piece of wire, stripped the isolation on one end and started it to the tactile switch on the PCB. Strip the isolation on the other end and fix some single pin connectors to connect to headers on the motherboard. Next in line was the power switch for the Raspberry Pi as I decided to power it from the front USB port headers on the motherboard and figured it would be wise to have an option to reset the Pi without having to open the case. Found a perfect place for it, the eject button. I routed the cables and went ahead with soldering the switch. Drill is pretty much the same. Cut the cable, strip the isolation, cut and slide on some heat shrink tubing, solder the switch, slide the heat shrink to cover exposed wires, and use lighter to shrink the material. Then I routed cables through the holes I made earlier to make the wiring as neat as possible. Next, it was time to fix power and hard drive activity LEDs. I cut an L-shaped piece of plastic from an air duct and drilled two holes in it. I then put in these tiny LED fixtures 
and the LEDs themselves. I test fitted the whole construction and moved on to soldering cables and again isolating exposed connections with some heat shrink. After sorting out the wiring, I moved on to making frames to hold two hard drives. This involved bending some more aluminum, fixing it together with some rivets and putting some threaded inserts. Next, it was draining holes in the VCR's metal plate, putting some rubber washers to eliminate vibrations, screwing in the hard drive and the entire assembly. From there, it was only a matter of connecting all remaining wires and it was all complete. And I think it turned out pretty darn good. The VCR enclosure has a lot of vents and the temperature of Pacifical CPU does not exceed 70 degrees Celsius under heavy load, which is far from the maximum operating temperature of 105 degrees. I hope you guys liked this video as much as I enjoyed working on this project. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.